Vibe Show 97.9, the await is here. It's been a long wait. We've been waiting on this one, but guess what? It's going down tonight. We got a major, major exclusive, man. I'm so, so geeked up about this. A lot of people super, super excited. So y'all already know the vibes. Y'all know y'all get your cups right, get your popcorn, whatever you enjoy doing, because you are definitely in for a treat tonight. Y'all keep it locked in. It's the Vibe Show, 97.9. Ooh! And we're back. It's the Vibe Show 97.9. I'm your host, Kano the Don, the Vibe King. Y'all already know the vibes. Listen, I, you know, being introduced to um, new vibes, new artists, it's just, I think that is absolutely amazing. And I am, I'm, I'm feeling really blessed to be introduced to such a multi-talented individual i i simply love it i love what i do and and it's just amazing i'm on this amazing ride listen like when when you're talking about art um being multi-talented i just feel like you have to mention this queen right here i mean she's really really killing the game on so many different levels that it's not even funny and it's so um refreshing to be introduced to her brand and I've, I've fallen in love with it completely and i'm so so excited i'm talking about multi-talented dj music producer songwriter fashion model and just pure dopeness to me the one and only eva shaw let's get her in here i was doing it <laughs> well, what's up e well, thank you for that introduction. Wow. Yo, That's I funny. mean, it's, it's it's only right. I mean, you putting in work out here. You you blessing the game with your art form, your talented, and you're just doing it your way. I just think that it's just amazing. So, no, thank you for this amazing opportunity, taking time out of your busy schedule because I know you everywhere right now. I'm literally everywhere right now, but. I love this whole vibe. I'm super happy to be here. So thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Now we got so much stuff that um, I want to talk to you about. You know, you have um, an amazing career. Your background is just it's, it's so amazing. And it, it's just so many um, things that I want to I want to get into it with you about and just go over it. And, and I'm just happy to be able to introduce my listeners to you and your brand if, if they're not already on it already. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. So, so now I, I want to start um, in Toronto. I want to start there. And I would like to know, what was it like for you growing up in Toronto? Because I'm sure then, um, I don't know if it was a major music scene. 
a major music scene then, but of course now things have evolved into, I feel like everybody's going there now. Like Toronto is on, got this huge spotlight on it with just massive talent coming from there. Talk to me about growing up there for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that Toronto, it's such a multicultural city. So I think right. that music is very important there, but I think you're right in the sense that a lot of Canadian artists haven't really gotten outside of Toronto. I mean, like when I was born. So I think kind of the last, you know, 10 years, 10, 15 years has been kind of like when um, can, there's been more of a spotlight on Canadian artists. Right. So, I mean, of course you have like Alanis Morissette and Celine Dion and you have all these like kind of like pop singers, but in terms of like hip hop, I definitely think it was more difficult um, for rappers to kind of like get out of just being big in Canada. Right. So I think with like Drake and stuff like that and The Weeknd and I mean, Justin Bieber too, you know, he's kind of pop R&B, I guess. Um, that's definitely like a newer thing for sure. And I, I see Toronto becoming sort of like a new New York. Right. Um, and every time I go back, it's like there's something new happening there. So it's I left Toronto because I felt like it was limited at the time. Right. I actually went to New York because I wanted to be an actress. So um, I, I went to NYU and I was modeling and just kind of, I knew how to DJ, but it wasn't, I wasn't thinking I was gonna be like a music person. Right. So for me, I kind of like, I moved there to, to get further in, in the arts as like a general kind of thing. Like I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do, but I thought like New York's gonna be the place. I, I love New York, that's like my, that's my other home because I've been there like most of my adult life, so. Right. And I was going I was going to ask you about that, too, because, you know, um, being in Toronto and then, you know, deciding to make that shift to go and chase your dreams um, in a way. Uh, well, that's exactly what you've done. But the transition, though, from Canada to going to New York. Talk to me about what that experience like for you, because for some that make those huge jumps um, going from um smaller places maybe and then they're going to like let's say a la or a new york or atlanta it's it's definitely a culture change yeah i mean i think that for sure the us in general is very different culturally than canada i think some people don't realize that um but for me just as soon as i landed in new york i was like i have to live here like the, <laughs> yeah the inspiration there's like this energy to it and this kind of creative vibe I got from it. Whereas like the thing I like about Americans is that they go like next level with stuff. Like if they like something, they're going to like spend a lot of money. They're going to like, you know, really like buy into it. Right. Whereas I feel like in Canada, people are a little more like reserved. They don't, you know, they're not going to go and spend that kind of money to go to a concert or if it's a little too weird, I feel like they don't like buy into it. Right. Whereas the U.S., like you could just make some weird like muffin top shop <laughs> in Brooklyn. Right. It's dope. Like people will fuck with it. Right. And yeah. It's just it, it's just different in Canada. So I, I never had this like kind of New York for me wasn't a culture shock in terms of like how big it was because Toronto is like a massive city as well. Right. But in terms of just like the interesting aspects of it, like the arts and the culture and stuff was very different than Toronto, for sure. Right. I, you know, I, and I think people are a little bit more nicer over in Toronto, too. You know, you know how it is over in New York, man. It's just like a whole nother vibe. People like, you know, everybody's on the move and, you know, yeah. people that's there, they're just looking around and then people trying to get what they're trying to get to. <laughs> you know what I'm I like New York for that because like, nobody's in your business like right. you can go and do your thing and and nobody cares like i could wear i could go like naked with like some like nipple pasties walking down the street and no people be like all right do you <laughs> yeah. yeah you lie about daddy that's you don't try that in canada in canada you're gonna be like <laughs> people will like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. right so now you know going there and going to school you know um modeling though i feel like you know you've done that on a high level as well um I, I, how tall are you too by the way i'm 5'10 
five ten. Okay, definitely, yeah. definitely model, um, model height. Was that yeah. like the vision though? Um, because like you kind of like just got into the the DJing aspect of it, but like, but before the DJing though, you were modeling on a high level. Um, doing that as well. Talk to me about that. Um, yeah, no, the, I mean, the modeling for me, it, that wasn't like something I went after really. Right. That was more just like, I was scouted multiple times in Toronto. And for me, it, like, I always wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be on SNL actually, Saturday Night Live. I was like, always make my parents laugh, like dressing up in weird outfits and stuff. Right. And so for me, I just wanted a way to get to New York. And I felt like New York would be the way that I would like get into theater and that right. kind of stuff. So when I was scouted to model, I was just like, this makes sense. You know, like I just went with it and I started making money from modeling and then I could buy like the stuff I needed to, to work on music production and DJing and like get all my, like my CDJs and uh, you know, mixing table and stuff. And all my speakers, like I had this tiny little apartment. And I just like, it was covered in music gear. Really? <laughs> Yeah, it was, I mean, the first few years was definitely hard because New York is crazy expensive. Um, but I just, I wanted it so bad and I was so inspired when I was there that I think it just drove me to constantly work. Right. Like any opportunity I had, I would take it. And even if it was like a free gig or something, I still did it. Right. And I feel like then I kind of proved myself. So it was kind of like, okay, they want to hire me back. Then I'm like, okay, now you have to pay me, you know? Right. So that's like how you like kind of hustle it. And it, it was hard. It took a couple of years, but I, I definitely think New York was like, I, you can tell I love it. <laughs> so Let me ask you this. It's funny you say that though. It made me think about something. And I want to ask you this um, because, you know, you're a professional in this business now. And um, do you think that just being around artists or in the space that we're in right now do you think that a lot of artists are trying to skip that process because i feel like you you just the way you broke that down right there mm -hmm. it tells me a lot about you you know the passion the uh, you understand the grind the grit and the grind you're not trying to have it handed you're not trying to have the microwave success um do, do you think that artists kind of like approaching the game um now and i know we're in a different space with social media and all of this and the fast-paced ways to get it or whatever but i me personally um being an artist at one point my, myself and a producer um playing both roles um i feel like i respect the game more because i went through those processes and you know i was blessed to come up in the era that i came up in but i respected the game more being you know remaining a student and and not afraid to go through those processes i just want to get your perspective on it because you just touched on something interesting yeah i mean i definitely you mentioned social media and i think that there are a lot of people that have kind of like used that to get famous and there's all these stories of somebody who got big on TikTok or whatever. Right. So there may be sort of a distorted perspective, I think. I think a lot of social media can help people kind of blow up overnight, mm -hmm. but that like overnight thing is also not actually overnight. Like most of those people that you see like Justin Bieber or um, Billie Eilish or anybody like that, they've really worked their ass off. Right. So I think maybe some kids see it and they think that it's like easy. So they kind of, you know, rely on things like, oh, if I have followers or I have whatever it is that I can become like the next Drake. Um, whereas what actually went behind, I think almost everybody that's really famous, I think, or even just successful, not even the biggest. If you if you're making a living at what you're doing and you're relatively successful, chances are like you you've busted your ass doing That's it. That's a fact. Yeah, and we just don't show that side of it. I think. Like I think, I, I think we should show that side though, because it's almost misleading in a way. Would you agree? I think that um, more reality shows geared towards being that we in this all reality world thing everything has got to be exposed what you're eating what we're doing everybody want to know what you're doing at all times or whatever but i feel like 
we, we're not really showing that yet. We're showing the private planes and the lifestyle and the jury and all of this stuff, but nobody is showing the 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 inspiring artists that that's trying to get in this business because they're basing it on the after effects, not the hard work that you put in laying on a wall trying to get the actual perfect shot. And I I love all your stuff, by the way. That's why I be on your page so much because I just think that it's so dope. But like the measures that you're going to to show the to show your creativity the way you want to do it i feel like we're not really displaying the the hard work as much yeah i think it's it's hard to show exactly what it is because like for me a lot of the time the part that's difficult is sort of like just being organized and following up with people and mm -hmm. and like if I, if I did a gig and they liked it, like just making sure my crew is, you know, following up and being like, Hey, when can we do the next booking? Um, you know, just things like if, if you really focus on what you're doing, right. then, yeah, I think that's like kind of the, the most important thing you can do. And, and I think once you, when you've been struggling so much with it, the last thing you want to do is be like, Hey, this is like, like how do, I don't know how to even show what that means. Like I'm happy to talk about it, but it's also kind of like, okay, now I can do a really cool video and showcase my fashion and do all the stuff. Like maybe it's kind of like you're so happy that you're like further from that point that you don't want to like go back to that. I could feel like, that. I could I, feel I, that. Totally, like I would, I would definitely talk about it, and I do talk about it because it's definitely. Um, I think the fact that it's hard makes you successful. Mm -hmm. If it's too easy, it's just like. Yeah, you're not going to really appreciate it or value it oh. um, and have that, that, that deep inner appreciation for it. And, and, and to me, it shows in um, the product that's being put out as well. I could tell um, just by the way that you put things together, which that mind of yours i would love to take a stroll through it because i'm telling you some of the things that, that i see the visuals um the photos um just just the way that you're putting images out there um i feel like it's so out of the box that it's intriguing it draws people in it's like yo this chick is on a whole nother level and to me um just having so so many years in the game and seeing it evolve and change um so many times um i think that that's the part that i appreciate the most one of the, the parts that i appreciate the most that you're going so out of your way to not be a part of the norm but actually doing it the way that you may be envisioning it in your mind and i, I just think that that's brilliant i really appreciate that because it's very hard to not just emulate somebody right and the reason like for me i don't have anybody to emulate because i don't i don't know any other female music producers that have the same background as me the same story as me so for me like i just had to make it up myself and i it's i think it's a longer process if you just do you and you don't try to copy anybody mm -hmm. but it's definitely it can be frustrating and um, but yeah, that's something I say all the time is that like, why even try to be something that's popular? Because if you can be yourself, like no one else can be you as well as you can be yourself. All right, all so right. for me, I was just like, this is the music I like. This is me. I like fashion. I'm just going to do what I do. And if people like it, you know, hopefully it's successful. If it's not, at least I like did what I want to do you know right, right absolutely talk to me about some of the um <clears throat> the changes that you went through because deciding to um do do the dj take the dj lane um that's some because you know when you think about it you you could have really took the modeling thing to just i mean out to the moon basically because i mean you have that aura about you to me um but going you know mixing it up do, you know, getting the model experience and then, um, like you said, using the finances from that to finance, getting all the equipment and everything you um, you needed 
to be a DJ and perfect your skills with no training. You wasn't trained. You wasn't taught how to DJ. You kind of, you, you were self-taught. Talk to me about um, what do you think really fueled that passion to want to be the best DJ and do it your way as well? I mean, for me, I just love DJing naturally. When I first started doing it, I just gravitated toward it. I, I like a lot of different kinds of music and I have a pretty broad knowledge of like older music and newer music. So I think when I started DJing, I kind of, my sets were a little bit more unique than other people right. because of just the way I put things together. Like I, I started off doing more like house music. Um, and, but even though like I was playing house music and producing house music, I listened to mostly hip hop and my dad's a musician as well. So I have like so many influences that I would just kind of like make a remix or just mash up something and just try to do it a little bit different than right. other people. And I think the combination of that plus being a female, um, there's just not a lot of that happening when I started. Um, so I think that that really kind of got, got people noticing me in the beginning. Right. Um, the modeling stuff wasn't really like a passion of mine. And it's mm, kind of funny because now fashion is such like a big part of my brand. Right. When I was modeling, I hated it. Like really, I would rather just right. wear like sweats and like a like a hoodie. Like I, I was not into like that stuff at all. So like I was into sports. Like I'm I'm I play basketball. Like I did track. You know, like the the girly kind of fashion stuff. I was like mm, not for me. Right. So I developed appreciation for it later because I love art so much and I love visual art and like I sculpt, I paint, I do like a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then I started seeing fashion as more like an art thing. Right. And that's kind of what got me back into it. And I have a totally different perspective on it now. So I think like, yeah, the modeling stuff was literally just for money for me at that point. And I right. thought maybe I can make some connections through it. You know, maybe I can like, yeah, I'll meet somebody and get like another gig somewhere. Right. So, yeah, it, the music stuff was like, it, it, when I was little, if I could, if I knew that I could be in music, like I would have done it a hundred percent. I just didn't think that I could. Right. Um, I think I just I saw people like TLC, like I love TLC, and I just saw them and I was like, well, I can't really dance like that. I can't really sing like that. So, like, I just forget about music. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, wait, I can be a music producer. <laughs> like, it's perfect. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And that's crazy because, you know, and, and I know we're not supposed to to judge people, you know, and I try my best not to do it. Um, But like. If let's, I'm, I'm, I'm new to your brand and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm digging into it. I'm doing homework. I'm doing my research. You have um, so much music um, produced out there that it's not even funny. Okay. But then I'm like looking at you. I'm like, okay, I'm looking at the modeling stuff. And then I'm looking at like, okay, E is over here. She's, she's hanging with the, the, the hardest of the hardest guys. I'm like, I'm trying to put it all together. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm, you know, it's just like, I'm trying to put it together and it's just, it, it just, it drew me in so much. I'm like, yo, like, because like, it's almost like a rarity in a way, um, you know, because you're so comfortable in, in, in the hard element. Yeah. Talk to me about like, I mean, was that like, were you um, inspired by, you know, hard hip hop or just hip hop in general, because I knew that I know I just hear so many influences um, within you. I, I'm just it's so interesting. And I just wanted to ask you that, because like if you listen to the music, you, you wouldn't think that, you know, you're looking at the fashion, you're looking at all of this and you're like, yo, these dudes are the hardest, are the hardest right here. Talk Everybody's to always been surprised by the music I make. So whether it's like a crazy like intense EDM track. Right. Like I've had times where guys came up to me when I was DJing and they were like, it's a girl playing right now. Like, right. What? right. I like when people tell their truth. So for me, like I, I do tend to like lean toward more edgy stuff. I don't know what, I don't even know what it is. I just, I really like, I like a lot of trap and stuff. Um, when I was really little, when I found Tupac, I just, like loved him um 
NERD, the clips, like th that's a good example of somebody that I think I kind of emulate where it's like, it, it has like an electronic edge to it and a right. little bit rocky. It's, it's hard, it's edgy, but it's also hip hop. Um, yeah, people like that. Sometimes I'm like, I don't even know where I get this influence from. Like <laughs> I listen to so much music too, like also rock and classical music. Right. My dad is, he's a jazz musician. So like, and he's playing actually guitar on one of the tracks on the album. So oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So I, I'm, I just, I like good music. So I like some music that makes me feel something. And usually when it's too like soft or like romantic or something, I feel, I find it cheesy often. Right. I'm very picky with lyrics. Um, and I just like when a rapper just like goes off and just says some shit right. and I'm like, okay, cool. I, like I can work with this. Like, and, and then if, if I feel <laughs> Thing. I just like Chris the Spirit is one of the rappers on my album. He's signed to my label. He's my dope. Body. Chris is like he's so underground, and a lot of people have never heard of him. But since his project, like everybody's asking me about him. Like, who's this guy? He just says stuff differently. Yeah. It's like it, it like flows on the beat, and then like he says certain things, and you're like, what did he just say that? Like, <laughs> right. and that's what I like. I like this like element of surprise. Um, and I like when vocalists can just kind of like pop on the beat nicely and it just adds like, even like a percussive elements. Like it's one thing about what you're saying, but it's also about the rhythms that you're, you know, putting on the beat and how it all works together. So I, I don't know if there's like one main influence, but I think the fact that I like so much music um, that that kind of just like influences it as a whole. Right. I mean, I also really like stuff like like Nelly and stuff, <laughs> like right, right. you know, like I I like that stuff too and Fabulous and stuff. When I was a kid, it's just it's kind of like me and DB Bantino, who's one of the artists of my label as well. We have the exact same taste in music. Like if we go in the studio and just play some stuff, we'll be like, like yeah, that's my that's my track. Like every time, <laughs> right, right. I I just I connect with rappers um in general regardless of what style they're they are because i like so much different music and different styles so whatever they like chances are i probably can like connect with it in some way right let me ask you this you know being that being that you i'm, I'm looking at these these dj events that you do um and they're massive what does that energy feel like for you like just to rock a massive crowd like that and i mean you really got everybody is going crazy and you're not your typical dj i mean you're i mean you're standing on stuff i mean just going crazy with it but what does that energy feel like though yeah that that is it definitely gives you this huge boost of energy and um inspiration uh, when people are, especially when they're like singing the songs mm -hmm. um, and then every time it drops and stuff and you can just, you feel like you're kind of giving them a good time, which is the best feeling ever. Right. So if people are just like going hard and partying and laughing and smiling, like that just makes you feel like, it makes me feel like the best, like it, it's so fun. And especially cause I really spend time to craft like my sets, mm -hmm. particularly if it's like a, a a festival because right. you only have an hour right so in a festival setting like you can't wing it as much you can but i i'm maybe some djs won't agree with me on this but if i if i'm doing like a club like i'll wing it if it's like a longer set but if you have thir uh, 60 minutes and or less sometimes 45 minutes um you really want to make sure that like every second you have their attention like I plan out every second of that. Like it's more like a concert for me. Right. So I kind of like link the, I, I'm big on my visuals as well. So I want the lights and the visuals and everything to be like in sync so that there's no, there's no like two minutes where people are bored. So that's mm -hmm. kind of like how I look at it. And I, and, and I, and I love that too. And I, and I feel like that's what, that's what make you different um on so many different levels now you know you've 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 had you've been in the business you're in the business talk to me about you know 
the learning aspect of the business. It's cool to have a skill set um, and be doing all of these amazing things. But what precautions um, have you taken or mishaps that you may have learned along the way on your journey when entering into the business as far as being able to make sure that you're paperwork and making sure that everything is intact to to not fall victim to horrible contracts not getting paid right learning later on in the game millions and millions of dollars later that you earn so many millions but you 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 know what i mean like talk to me about um because with you being a student i feel like you taken some precautions but maybe there may have been some mishaps or some things that you went through that you make and share that could inspire and help other artists that's trying to get on this path to greatness as well i mean i think making mistakes is just part of it and it's going to be different for every single person that's that's in it so what maybe doesn't work for me might work for somebody else so to say like some people are like oh don't sign with major labels you know they say you have to have a business manager you have to do this there's, there's no like for sure way to go about it but it has to feel right and i think you have to have people around you that know the business and that can help guide you that you trust i think that's why a lot of people work with um like family members when they're starting like best friends that they know are not like just in it for money right. and i think like, i've had a few people along the way that just saw like okay, I have a Vegas residency. They know how much money I'm making. So they're just like, let me step in real quick and get right. that cut, you know? And I like, I, I think I was probably a bit naive. I, I sensed it because I, I mean, you know, I've, I've had a couple of jobs already. So I'm pretty like, I've, I'm pretty sensitive and can sense sauce people out. But at the same time, you're kind of like desperate to have somebody like helping you with your career right. and as an artist like you just want to make music you want to be creative um and the last thing you want to do is is read contracts and try to understand like what what's going on um i would just say like that a lot of artists think of course i don't think you should sign anything too long term too early the only time to sign something like more intensive it would be if you know you're at that breaking point where you're like you're gonna be like the next drake or something you have like real big numbers and they're gonna give you like a lot of marketing to get like next level like to me that's that's a really smart move um other than that you, you have to as an artist you have to understand what um you know how much investment it takes from the labels for them to make it back as well and like I think a lot of artists think that they should just because they're talented, they should receive like a certain amount of money right. and then only sign like one song, which is like, I also run a label. So I know both sides of it and I know how hard it is to make that money back from artists that don't have a lot of streams. Right. So if you, if you understand your business, that will help you so much to not be frustrated later. So you can decide like, Hey, I want to get a big advance from a label if they're going to offer it to you, but also realize that you're not going to, you're not going to get paid for that music until they recoup it. Right. You know? right. It's a business. It's not a charity. You know, yeah, if right. it's money, they, they want to make it back. It's definitely so, not charity. E for real. Yeah. I definitely appreciate you touching on that. Vibe show 97.9. We just in here vibing out with the very lovely multi-talented Eva Shaw. We got to pay some bills. Um, we be right back. Y'all make sure y'all keep it locked in. I appreciate everybody that's pulling up right now, showing my special guests so much love. I gotta go pay some bills. Y'all make sure y'all keep it locked in. Don't go nowhere. We doing this. It's the Vibe Show, 97.9. What's new and hot on the scene? The Pink Smoke Cigar Company, a black female-owned boutique cigar company offering one-of-a-kind hand-rolled cigars from proprietary blends created specifically for Pink Smoke by the J. Will Cigar Company. Their exotic recipes are blended from various regions of Nicaragua, Ecuador, Colombia, Mexico, the Dominican, and Honduras. What's certain 
is you'll experience the most unique, even fresh smoke your palate has yet to discover. They're so hot. They were the premier brand ambassador at the 2022 Men's Style Gifting Suite for Super Bowl 56. For more information, go to pinksmoke4u.com. That's pinksmoke, the number four, letter u.com to experience Pink Smoke's sexy, classy cigar culture. Contact L Group PR Agency for bookings and events. Back with the very lovely Eva Shaw. Again, shout out to everybody listening on the radio airwaves, man. And shout out to everybody that's pulling up, spending time with us right now. We just vibing out right now. Eva, you know what I want to ask you? I want to ask you, can you explain to me and the artists and listeners um, and anybody that want to know the um, the balance between releases and performances? I feel like that's important. That's a hard one. Um because I think it's always, the thing is you, you don't want to do too many shows that you can't focus on new music. Cause I know from experience when you just start taking the money and taking the shows and you get in this kind of like, it doesn't stop almost. You're just kind of in this like rotation of like, you get addicted to being on the road, right. especially as a DJ, I think. Um, as a performing artist, maybe that's not so much of an issue, but as a DJ, you can easily just like never, have time to go back in the studio, uh -huh. especially if you're doing like stuff I was doing with, you know, flying back and forth from like Asia to, you know, back to the U S and Europe and you get so jet lagged and you, you don't have time to like kind of figure out your career. So I definitely think that the music has to be like the basis of what you're doing. Right. Um, and if you make sure that that's like your set for the next, you know, six months or something, then you know you go ahead and figure it out i definitely am not a fan of planning too much ahead because i also think like nowadays stuff is changing quickly you might get a new fresh idea that's like really like you just want to drop it right now right and right. and then you just want to go with it but you definitely still need like some time to be able to properly plan like the marketing and stuff because like if you don't market stuff nobody's gonna hear it and right. I think a lot of artists think that just if they're dope, that people will just hear it and it just won't happen. Like you, you really have to go out of your way to make sure people really hear that. Right. Right. Absolutely. Because, you know, that, that I feel like that's important too, because, you know, all these, these artists have to understand with anything, you know, it is a business and, and to run businesses and stuff like that, it does take investment capital. You got to have something, some type of financial backing, um, whether you're financing it yourself or or you have a financial investor investing it to you, it takes investment. And you yourself know that the game has changed now. You know, everybody's hustling now. Everybody's hustling online. Um, you know, radios are hustling now. You're lucky if you can get, you know, free music played now. Um, you know, you can pretty much um, buy anything. I, and, and I heard Money Bag Yo. I was watching an interview um, of him and, and he said something that was interesting. He was like, man, um, what he did, he, he just took, you know, he was in the streets and, and he hustled and stuff like that. But he was like, you know, he always invested into his dream because he always wanted to do music. And he was like, instead of going, taking money, going to his partner or something like that, who might have had a little studio or something, he, he wanted to invest his money. He didn't care how much it was he had to save up in order to be in the big studios to have his stuff mastered professionally and sounding the way it's supposed to be investing in the best video quality that the money can afford just to when you're putting your your images out there and putting your brand out there you want your stuff to sound to have the best sound quality possible to get the best results because you know people are brutally honest nowadays and just Rating stuff it don't sound right it might yeah. be a super dope song but if it if the sound quality don't sound right you lost the fan right there they're like ah oh, man that's i'm not feeling yeah. it that's, that's definitely i think even also as a vocalist just finding out like what your vocal settings are like oh that's so important like, when you're mixing and stuff like and everybody's different too like i mean travis scott like he found his sound right. and like you know it's travis scott even just from the backing vocals like in one second you know it's him Right. And like, I think defining your own sound with, with, I mean, yeah, that is mixing as well as your own voice, like when what you're saying, it, it's, 
having the right producer for you is so important. And I think like some people like six, nine or, or trippy red or people like that, they, they can get away with sort of like a messy mix. And like, you know, right. if that's your style, then, you know, it can work. If it's the right time and you're good enough. <laughs> right. But yeah, like if you want to sound like, if you, if you come out sounding like Migos or Drake or something like that, people are going to notice. Right. So that's the thing is that a lot of people don't want to pay producers for their time. And like, for me, like I almost after this album, like I, I'm, I'm not really going to work with that many more people anymore because I would love to, but it's, it's too time consuming for me. And, and a lot of artists don't respect producers time. And that's just what it is. Ooh, Lord, I, I, hold, hold up, E. Hold up, E. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I, I have this conversation with my friend, Mr. Logan, when we talk all the time. We talk about that because he's a super dope producer um, and, and and one of my life brothers that, that I love very dearly. And we both produce and we spent countless hours when we were producing stuff together and doing stuff together. We always had these conversations. And... Um, I just feel like you, you're absolutely right. And it's sad that it have to be that way because you, you're so passionate and you love working with artists and creating and doing all of this. But somewhere along the journey, um, as music was evolving and time is changing, it just seems like um, the more people producing now because everybody feels that they're a producer, not knocking anybody just because you got Fruit Loops and software and it's so accessible now. Everybody's a producer now. Everybody, every, it's just everybody's an artist nowadays. It's, you can't even really get nobody to listen to your stuff to get a good opinion. Of. Yeah. It's just weird. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's weird. I, it's it's it is definitely also easier now to like make beats and stuff because there's a lot more stuff available and samples and you know if if you're going for like that kind of vibe like you you can make something in you know an hour um, but yeah it's gonna sound like everybody else so right. I think that's kind of why I do it differently because I'm like yeah I don't want it to sound like that like some some tracks I I do that are more basic you know that have just like more of a loop kind of vibe but then the other tracks I go I go more in with it so that people when they hear it are like wait how did she do that and right. then, you right. know they don't know how to do it and I'm like I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> 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 For real, I'm not, no, no, no! I'm not telling you. I'm not yeah. telling you. As a producer, though, do you do you still? I know things be moving fast, and we don't have as we get older. We don't have as much time as we used to when we were younger to just goof off and all this stuff or whatever. You don't have as much time. But do you still, as a producer, do you still love building with the artists from the ground up? Um, basically, trying to develop something around them and capture their sound and or 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 do you um just like the ones that that you work with come in they go through some beats pick out some beats oh i like this one or whatever ooh, ooh, and then just do it like that um i for me i i have i usually have my own idea per artist that i work with like where i would like to see them so right. like i of course i could just copy you know something that they do already so like if I'm going to go in the studio with somebody, I know what their sound is. Um, if it's a smaller artist, I prefer to kind of like switch it up a little bit because I'm like, why are you working with me then? You already have your producers to make what, you know, what you already do. Right. Come to me. It's like you want something different, you know? So um, it, it depends on the artist because some are not as open as others. And I tend to be kind of persuasive. So I think like, if I really see something, like I'll get somebody to try something that I envision as, as sounding cool for them. And then um, if they don't like it, obviously we don't do it. But a lot of the time I feel like I can get artists to kind of break out of their bubble a little bit. Right. Um, I haven't worked with like a really massive artist. I haven't worked with like a Drake or something like that yet. So um, yeah, I mean, that's my next goal. So I, I feel like really big artists are more open to new things. They don't want something that sounds like what they did already. Right. So for me, like I, I would be even more comfortable with a bigger artist because I can just play some weird stuff and they'll probably like get it already. If that right. makes sense. Yeah, a smaller that makes sense. Artist, 
might be a little more hesitant because they don't want to, you know, they want to seem cool still and like, especially the artists that like identify more with the streets and stuff, like they don't want to come across like they're like selling out or something like right, that. Right, right. And it's, and, and I think that, um, and that was one of the questions I was going to ask you too, because you work with so many different, um, so many up and coming artists, so many artists that's kind of pop in, not maybe not on the Drake's levels or anything like that, but you do work with some super dope artists. And, and that was one of the things that I was going to ask you um, too, you know, do you find that they be afraid to try new things or they feel that they have to kind of like stay within a certain barrier to kind of maintain their street cred because they're kind of balancing the streets and trying to be an artist and all of this stuff or whatever. Do you, do you, do you run into those problems? Uh, all of the time, uh, almost everyone. So like it, there's only a couple artists that you know, somebody like D.B. Bantino is a good example because he's he's a songwriter. You know, he's written for Swaley. He's like, you know, he, he produces as well. So he's usually a little bit more open to stuff because I think he has a bit more of a broad perspective on that. Right. Um, almost everyone else is, yeah, a little bit more um, hesitant, I guess it would, I would say. Um, like G. Mella is another artist on my label. He's pretty open to stuff as well. Um, he's he's very creative and a unique artist that i think can do really well as well like i picture him sort of like a Sheck west kind of vibe right like just doing something where you're like whoa this like this song is really weird but it somehow works like across genres across cultures like right. that that's the stuff that excites me like things that like normally most people would be like this is weird <laughs> but <laughs> You know, once it works, it's like way bigger than any other track. And like that's what it, that's what I want to do. So right. a track like that where it's just like undeniable. Right. Yeah. We're doing so much, you know, always running, flying here, over there, always working, so busy, got so many things going on. How do you how do you balance being able to turn it off? to decompress and and to not allow it to take over mentally um because you know this this celebrity stuff and and, and entertainment business we see so many people fall victim to it um when they may want to try to escape it for a moment or whatever and they just can't escape it um what are some of the things that you do to try to keep it balanced and be able to not lose yourself mentally with um because you know your celebrity is going to build i mean you're hot you know what i mean um and it's it's growing consistently and your name's getting out there more people are going to work with you more bigger opportunities are going to come it's just a matter of time it's inevitable i mean you you are just multi-talented <laughs> how what are, what are some of the things that you do to decompress to not lose yourself in this business I mean, I'm definitely a perfectionist and I'm very anxious. So I think the combination of that um, in this industry can be very difficult. I am constantly working. Like if I can, you know, get something done or I can meet somebody, like I just, even if it's not just being in the studio, it's like some kind of connection. Like I just love it so much. It's my whole life. So in that sense, the fact that I love it so much, I think that that helps. The other thing um, I think would be that my career, I feel like has been kind of a slow build. Um, like I started as a teenager already DJing and, you know, every couple of years, I feel like it's been kind of growing gradually. Um, and I think the fact that it has been a little gradual has kind of helped me to kind of get used to it. Like, I think some people it happens in, you know, two years, you're kind of like, you know, it's it maybe is too much at once. Whereas I've I've also done modeling before. I've done like a bunch of different things. So it's it's not like I've just been grinding on this one thing the whole time. So I've kind of like a I, I'm very like grounded and I'm I'm also humble in the sense that I I like I don't take anything for granted. Like I'm really if something happens, I'm like, okay, this is great. Like, how can I get to the next level? Like, it's always like a next step for me. Right. But in terms of like not letting it get to me, 
I can't say that it won't happen because, you know, I, it definitely happens to a lot of people. So I, it probably will if I get bigger, you know, when I get well, you're big now. We're not going to die yeah. here now, Ian. I'm not going to let you do that now. You, you, you're big. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm always going to. I'm always going to. on the show, baby. We know you're big. We, we know what's up. You know what I mean? We, we're trying to get in now. Wow, yeah. we get in no. that way when you know when you're on the moon and we and, and we outside the concert or we trying to yeah. come, like, we, 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 we trying to can we get the exclusive to get in or whatever and the boss yeah. is got me like this man now, you don't know people <laughs> man get out of here man I'm like e, 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 e. you know I want to be able to steal like, oh <laughs> <laughs> exactly because I know we we me and Jew me and Jewel talk about this all the time we I we we when you know you know. I mean, yeah. Mr. T already said it already. When you know, you know. Yeah. I know where you're going. I know deep down inside, you know where you're going. And I appreciate the fact that you, you know, you're remaining humble, even, on, even on the level that you own. Yeah. I mean, you just, I keep doing it. You just keep going. I love it. And I keep getting good feedback. So that's, that's how you build a career, you know? You right. know, you don't have expectations per year. You just, keep doing it because you love it. People respond and then that's how you grow. That's, that's right. It. Do you, do you worry though? Um, do you worry though in this entertainment business with um, being a beautiful woman in this business, um, being on, on, you know, the other side too. Cause I mean, like I say, you deal with the grimiest of the grimiest. You love the hardcore hip hop rap, all of this stuff. You're dealing with real street dudes. I'm sure. Um, do you ever worry though in the business, um, as a, as a woman, a beautiful woman in this business, because you, you know, I know, you know, the stories you're, you're in this business. Um, it's things to take precaution and watch out for or whatever, you know, how we go. And, and, and this is just a message that you can give to, um, the female, the younger girls coming in the game or whatever, anything that you can possibly share or any Or any measures that you may have taken yeah i mean i think as a woman regardless of what career you're doing you, you're always gonna have to deal with that so for me to be here saying like oh being a music producer or an artist is any different you know women we just know that shit's gonna happen at some point you know right. Right. Um, I, I i'm not sure that there's anything you can do the only thing i that I've done is kind of, I'm, I'm strong. I'm, I'm confident in myself. Um, it's definitely, I've had bad situations before, but you know, all, all you can do is um, be as aware as you can be and just trust your intuition. If something's, you know, weird, then bring somebody with you, <laughs> you know? Um, but I, I don't think the fact of doing like, you know, hip hop or, or anything like that is is any different than anything else, you know. I've done a bunch of other stuff, and I've also had weird experiences. So right. weirdos everywhere. There's <laughs> predators everywhere. If you're a woman, it's probably gonna happen. So just right. so get ready. Yeah. You got you ready about that one when you when you get your bread, when you get your bread right. Get your get your big enough uh, bodyguard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Solo, man, I'm in love with Solo. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's taking me all over the place. It just it's taking me on these rides. I'm 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 just I'm 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 like this. Then it's got me like and it's it's just, it's just taking me all over. I feel like it's just a, a well blended um project. Talk to me about um first and foremost why the name Solo what does it mean? I feel like it has some significance when it's coming from you. Yeah, for sure. I, for me, it just meant like my project on my label as I want to do it, not thinking about, you know, is this going to fit on a playlist or a radio station? I'm literally just making it as exactly how I want to make it. And I'm, I just decided which tracks, which artists, like nobody's telling me what to do on the, on the album. So mm -hmm. I felt like that was the, the most important thing that I could do as a debut album is to just kind of be like, all right, here's me just like doing some shit. Yeah. <laughs> and right. like, then I'll see what people like. And then my next projects, I'm going to kind of refine it and, and keep moving from there. Um, 
Because like I said before, I like so many things. I like so many genres and subgenres that for me, I like I kind of needed to just get out this project that is so kind of like multi-dimensional that um, just to get people to see what I can do basically. Because if I just keep doing singles all the time, I can't fully showcase like what it is. And like you said, you know, it it's different. It's you see me and you might not think like, oh, I'm going to make tracks like this or I'm not going to DJ like that. Or, you know, it, it just, it doesn't, it kind of doesn't make sense in your brain. So when there's a project and then you see all these pictures and, and, you know, me talking, then you might be like, okay, this is weird and different and hopefully people like it. And that's just like what it means. Yeah. I never thought it was weird though. Be I it really caught my attention. That's that's why, if you notice, we've done several promotions for you because I I didn't know where to go. Like because there's so many dope images of you that but, so big and like yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's so dope. It's like I don't know. Yeah, and I like the mysticness that you are still carrying and incorporating in your music, in the brand, in the projects, in your visuals. I think that some way we've kind of lost that um, and the artists that still trying to maintain the mysticness. I think that those are some of the dopest artists out and you are one of those brands. And, and, and that's why I was like, yo, I got to do something with the picture with the mask. Cause it's, it's you know, you got, the mask, you got the different looks when, when creating these visuals. Um, are you writing the treatments yourself? for the visuals or like how involved? I feel like you're like totally involved. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that's that's part of, um, actually people have told me before to be more approachable and, you know, not as kind of like, I, I feel like people don't necessarily know my personality because you look at my stuff and you're kind of like, <laughs> like, <is> she, <laughs> you know, what's going on here? Right. Um, so I have had people actually tell me, to be more approachable because I think that's, that is kind of the trend right now to like, you know, Doja Cat showing like the types of photos she takes. Like you feel like you're next to her, you feel like you know her. Right. But I mean, I don't really do that as much. Like I do a little bit of personal stuff, um, you know, pictures with alpacas or at a farm or something that I did yeah. today. Right. Um, yeah, so I do a little bit of that, but I'm definitely a little bit more like mysterious, I guess. I've, I've had a few people tell me that and it's partly because I don't do vocals a lot. So I think just doing the music that's already less kind of an immediate connection because I'm not right. like singing stuff all the time. Right. Um, but yeah, in terms of the visuals, partly why I wanted to be so involved with it is because I'm not like singing all the time. Mm. So I wanted to show my personality um, without having to like actually say things. So for me, like I can wear a weird outfit and that's like me showing my personality and, you know, all those video clips and stuff that I do. It's all my like creative direction. And I kind of find people that I think can work with me to put it together. Right. Obviously, I don't do everything myself because I wouldn't be able to. But, you know, I, I definitely am like always very active, like on Instagram, finding new people to work with, um, looking through videos and new designers as well like fashion designers right hitting them up and being like hey do you want to like lend me some stuff for my video like i, I just the weirder the better for me so right. I've, definitely, I've connected with a few fashion designers um because they like that i will like wear anything right <laughs> so um michael kale is one of them he's he's showing at paris fashion week this september so we're gonna we're gonna do a little shoot in september so that's definitely gonna be weird <laughs> I'm I'm I can't I can't wait to see it. Like I'm I'm just you got me locked in. You, you got our, the the whole vibe family. We we are huge huge fans and and like we are like so locked in. Do you yeah. think that that fearlessness? Um, you feel like that fearlessness is carrying you though, because like I say, everything is out of the box with you. Um, I don't think that you can be put in a box because you wouldn't you you wouldn't be comfortable. Um, not being able to have that total um, creativity. And you've done um, the majority of everything that you've accomplished thus far has been on an independent level. 
Um, yeah. I know that you had a label situation with Sony and had some different situations or whatever. Um, and it seemed like with reading certain things or whatever that they were trying to somewhat um, box you in in a way or whatever. Was that some of the main reasons that you wanted to create your own label to be able to have that freedom to um, do your own thing and also allow artists that sign to your label to have that freedom of creativity as well? Yeah, for sure. And I think, I mean, and not to, to talk badly about major labels, I just think they're more of like, a, it's it's so corporate that they, they have their algorithms and their, you know, like they know what they want to spend money on by numbers and stuff like that. But stuff doesn't work like that as much anymore, I feel like. Right. So right. These major labels are kind of working off like an older um, template. Right. And now artists are kind of like, just blowing up that you wouldn't expect to blow up. Like Billie Eilish is a good example. Exactly. Um, she's not a typical, you know, pop star, but now she is. So now if there's an artist like her, now they're going to put money into it. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of that, that's how I see major labels. And when I was with Sony, there wasn't like anybody like me. So their only reference point would be like another, like, I don't know, DJ or something that they could kind of like emulate. Um, really? That's how, they, that's how they looked at you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly how they looked at me, but I think that they they know what works, like, musically. So they know what they can get playlisted, and they know what they can, like, make their investment back. So right. if you're doing, like, you know, popular EDM music with a certain type of vocal, they know it's going to get on these big playlists, and it's going to mm -hmm. make this million, many million streams. They're going to make this money back, and it's a business so right. when you're an artist doing your own thing doing your own label it's more like okay let me see how i can like take some risks right. and you know maybe it doesn't work but at least you know it's it's your own stuff so it's your own fault if it doesn't work <laughs> but, right yeah i mean i think you have to just kind of go for it like if you believe in it you just go for it if it doesn't work you know you can always i mean not everyone but you know, most people can try to, you know, figure out something else in their life. But right, right. I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah. Solo out right now, streaming on all music platforms. I'm telling you right now, you're in for a treat. If you're not on it, you're definitely sleeping under a rock. Um, stop playing games and make sure that you go and tap in. Matter of fact, you need to make sure that you go and follow Eva Shaw too. Um, and it's it's pretty much you kept it simple. It's Eva Shaw pretty much on everything. Um, also, you know, make sure that you go and visit the website um, www.evashawmusic.com. Y'all make sure that y'all get tapped in. I'm telling you, it's the the, the the spaceship is already up already. It's fueled up. I'm telling you right now, don't miss the boat. It's going to be too late. Don't miss the boat. Get on it right now because it's definitely going up. The music is phenomenal. Eva, for before we before actually these closing uh these, these closing questions, um let's let's give some shout outs. Let's give some roses out. You got a lot of people that support you, a lot of people that believe in you, um your team, um fans, your family. Um Anybody that you want to give roses to and shout out right now, let's let's just take that opportunity to show these people yeah. some love. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's there's been a few writers at some blogs and stuff like um, Nina Rowe from Billboard who wrote an amazing article about me, um, and Dylan Green at at uh, Pitchfork, and you know, there's there's people like that that really just you know, kind of just took a chance and just found me like naturally which i think is really cool because so many things are you know through pr agents and through you know a manager trying to get something to happen and and this was really authentic like all the support on the album was very authentic um spotify canada was just like amazing they gave me a billboard in the city um of, at smg everybody who um got me the factor grants which helped fund it fund a lot of my stuff right which is fantastic. That's a great thing about being Canadian is that if you can, you know, if you can get your shit together basically and prove right. that you're worthy, then they'll give you some funding, which definitely helped. Um, yeah. And my team at Mad Fatty and 
um, all the rappers on the album because there's 27 rappers exactly. on there. No, 30 rappers. Sorry, 27 tracks. <laughs> yeah. 30 rappers. Wow. That was a mission. Um, but yeah, mostly everyone is cool. And um, and if you weren't, then I don't care. <laughs> right, 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 right. All the fans, you got your, your fans, uh, they they love you. Um, and, and I know why, because I'm one now. I, I love you. I think that um, that's why I wanted to do this interview because I wanted to have an opportunity to um, to be able to speak with you, to be able to give you your flowers and um, tell you that we, we, we really appreciate um, all of the art and everything that you you are blessing us with. Um, it's just, it's totally amazing. You're on an amazing ride and um, it, it's, it's definitely going. We, we definitely behind you all the way. I see, I see the vision, I see what you're doing. And you're definitely in your own lane. And I think that that's so important. You've carved out your own lane and you really grinded your way up to where you're at right now. So shout out to you for that. Thank you guys, because like without people like you finding artists on the rise, like that's everybody just wants like the biggest artist. And I think to it's a real talent to be able to see people before they're like, you know, at the top, top. Right. And I just, yeah, I really appreciate the the effort you guys have done. It's, I, I love the show. It's, it's great. Your energy is great. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We're building a relationship. So yeah. now that we have broken the barrier and we're <laughs> building a relationship, now that means that the vibe show will get exclusive. I like to have the music before anybody. Hopefully we can yeah. at least be on that list of when you're getting everything together from promotional advertisement or whatever we want it all we want to help in any type of way that we can help so we want to be on the list hey make sure the vibe show get, uh make sure the vibe show get this promo we finna run this hey the new single let's make sure we get that over the strong jewel of the vibe show so we can have that in heavy rotation for you we got your back for sure um now we talked about we talked about a lot um and as we know it's a lot of stuff still going on in the world even though when we're in our world in our in our little bubble in our zone focusing on building and you know chasing after our dreams and stuff like that outside outside of our bubble it's still life going on a whole bunch of stuff going on in the world um or whatever and a lot of a lot of a lot of people are depressed you know i feel like we're in a dark dark place at at times with so much trauma and so much stuff going on in the world financially and job economy and just a whole bunch of stuff um to any to anybody that may be feeling low in spirit to anybody um that's that's an artist or chasing after a dream that may be on the verge of giving up um what advice or some inspirational words coming from somebody that they admire or looking at as success what what, what would you tell anybody that's listening right now that needs some encouragement or, or or a warm word or uplift or anything what would you tell them i mean i think that people are definitely having a tough time right now including myself and i think that just knowing that other people are also going through things and on different levels of course some people are worse off than others but to not sort of think that you're the only one um really helps or that helps me anyway um a lot of times like the things that we present are like the the best moments so you know on social media or your friends or or your or anybody basically like I feel like people are, don't want to talk about how they're feeling. So right. they, you know, they show that it, it comes across like everyone's fine. And if you're not feeling like that, you might see that and kind of feel like, you know, am, am I the odd one out here? Right. But the situation is not normal the last few years and it's still not normal. And people are acting like everything's like back to normal now, which, you know, it's getting there and it will get there, but it's okay to feel those things and i don't know if there's like a solution for everybody because some people are really struggling and um it's tough but 
the stuff always changes. And once when it's really low, my mom always tells me that you know that it's going to be better later because it can't get worse than this. So, right. <laughs> yeah, right. That's just what I try to think about. Right. I, I definitely, um, I definitely appreciate you for that. Um, I, a quick um, question that I got in, an email question that I got in, or whatever. How would one be able to work with you? Um, if, if I'm an artist, or um, I want to work with you, if I want to try to have an opportunity to um, sign to the label or anything like that, how would one um, go about doing that? I mean, I think you can send us an email. It's on our at Mad Fatty our Instagram account. Um, I'm definitely open to people. We're a really small team. So we're just not, we're not like signing people regularly. We probably will be expanding in the next couple of years, but um, yeah, I think I'm always open to give people advice. Like I, I'm definitely busy, but like if you're really dope and you're really like busting your ass, like I'll, I'll notice it. I think a lot of times people just like, hit me up and are like, oh, let's work, but then they never send anything. So I'm like, <laughs> Goofballs. Yeah, I don't like what from your picture, like <laughs> you know, like send me some stuff. Like make I make a, a private SoundCloud link or like a Dropbox link. Like don't attach them all on email or whatever. Like that's so annoying because my email is like exploding. Right. Like send me a nice link that like I can check stuff out. Um if I don't answer send me another one. I mean, don't harass me, but <laughs> you know, like I don't see everything. So, right. and if she don't answer a couple of times, that means that it's, it's, it's whack and, and <laughs> work on it some more. She's not going to say it. I'll say it. That means tighten your, tighten your work up, put a little bit more effort into it. And then we'll, we'll take a look at it. You know, we'll take a listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you my manager now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I definitely yeah. get it. Um, Definitely. I mean, I, I, I get it. Like when I first started to, I thought everything I did was amazing. Right. So like I was like sending stuff to other artists and being like, oh, you have to like, you have to work with me. And and people didn't respond in the beginning. And I'm like, now I realize because it wasn't good enough, you know, and that's definitely a learning process. Like as you develop, you'll start to see that your older stuff maybe wasn't that great. And then, you know, you start to be more picky about what you send people, right. but it's fine still to send stuff like yeah. while you're learning but just be try to be like critical like don't like don't make a beat and then send it immediately like give it a day <laughs> right 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 yeah, yeah I, I, think I love that I love, I love that <laughs> let's put them social platforms and um any other ways that people can connect with you let's definitely let's put that Let's put those platforms out there for them for way to, ways that people can actually connect with you in any type of way. Can we put those out there for them? Yeah, it's um, at Eva Shaw on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter. Um, my TikTok's Eva Shaw TikTok. Um, and my YouTube is Eva Shaw Official. So aside from those, everything else is Eva Shaw. They can also visit the website as well, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't use the website as much anymore. Like, I feel like <laughs> people aren't using it as much. So right. I, I try to do most of my updates on Instagram. Um, that's like kind of where I do it now. And Facebook, too, I post a lot of stuff still. So, yeah. Absolutely. E, listen, I want to tell you that it, it has been an absolute honor. I really, really enjoy myself. Um, it's such a pleasure talking to you. You're really like a, a super down to earth person. And just to be able to make this connection um, really, really means a lot for me, for my team and for um, the listeners and our fans as well. So I want to thank you and I want to wish you on behalf of me and the whole staff. I want to um, wish you more blessings and more success with everything that you're doing right now and everything that you're going to be doing in the future. Skies is the limit for you, for sure. Yeah. We, it, that means so much to have your blessing on my stuff and um that's li literally all i could ask for so yeah just thank you for having me it was really absolutely. fun it was really fun absolutely now you know once you're a part of you come and do the vibe you know that you're a part of this family now so you are yeah. honorarily um inducted into the vibe family you have our support right. from all of the team 
<laughs> you're definitely part of the vibe family you know that you have to come back on here again and again and again and again again we just going you come on here anytime you want to come back on here um just let us know and we're gonna make it happen for sure and we definitely got to do the in person also we've yeah. been having conversations and we're going to get with you and your team and we definitely want to do a cover issue of you um a spread on on our um our magazine vibe one too okay. so we're gonna definitely get with you on that we want to do a layout on you and i think that's going to be dope to definitely yeah. have you on the cover of vibe one magazine for sure definitely we, we have to link in person for sure oh yeah we definitely gonna we definitely gonna make that happen or whatever yeah. listen y'all i want to thank everybody for showing eva shaw so much love it has definitely been a vibe shout out to everybody that show mad love stayed on here all our listeners on the airways we want to thank y'all so so much y'all are really really the champions right now because without you guys we wouldn't be doing this we wouldn't be able to do it so you guys are so so important and your time is so valuable to us we just want to thank y'all so so much y'all make sure that y'all go and get that new project solo it's out right now make sure that y'all go and run it up run it up run it up we have um a single on our on our platform as well you can go over there to www.thevibeshow979.net and request just type in eva shaw just type it in and y'all go and request that thing up to 10 times per day let's get the singles going let's run these streams up let's go follow her if you're not following her let's run these numbers up this project is definitely definitely worth a listen and a stream a download let's just go and support this queen she's doing amazing things out here it's the vibe show 97.9 with my special guest the one and only eva shaw eva we love you <laughs> thank you so much for having me again absolutely y'all know my slogan more love less hate makes the world a better place y'all make sure y'all enjoy y'all evening be safe we love y'all me and e we are out peace